Hey guys, Coffin Skate here, and in this video I want to talk about my thoughts on emulation and a little bit on piracy and whatnot, because um, I know there's been a lot going on with emulation, especially with Nintendo, uh, some developers of the Yuzu uh, emulator and the Citra. And I'm not going to get into that and like the whole legalities of emulation. I might go into it, into the legalities of it in a little, uh, a little bit here, but in terms of like the whole lawsuit with Nintendo and Yuzu, um, I am I'm not going to be going into that. Uh, and also, I'm not going to go into like where to find ROMs or whatnot um, because that's a whole different can of worms, and uh, that's something I don't want to get into and possibly get. Uh, uh, be on fucking Nintendo's crosshairs or some bullshit, so, anyways, so, uh, emulation, you know, emulation has been a, um, point of content for, basically, since, for a long time, when it comes to, uh, video games, and, uh, you know, I guess it really all start stems back to, um, the Gleam emulator for the Dreamcast, where it was, you know, separate releases of, uh, there's kind of like an emulation, or emulator for the Dreamcast, uh, where I think it was, like, three different games that received, like, sep like special discs to where you could run those games on the Dreamcast and they look better. Uh, those games being Tekken 3, Metal Gear Solid, and Gran Turismo 2, I think. I can't even believe I remember what games in particular, but... Point being, there's a way to play those games on Dreamcast with better uh, with better graphics and resolution and whatnot. But um, since then, emulation has evolved to you know be able to run older games on PCs now, and now we're getting to the point of being able to emulate PS3 uh, PS3 games, and um, and a lot of games on the PS3 are actually now playable on, uh, through this emulator. It's pretty damn impressive how far that emulator has come, but, um, for me, basically, I can really just start by saying I'm in full support emulation, um, for a couple reasons. One, it's mainly because of, um, you know, it's great for preservation, you know. Obviously, physical video games are probably not going to last forever, but chances are they will not last forever, especially cartridges and whatnot, um, and, and as someone who is a huge advocate for, uh, for, for, I shouldn't say physical media won't last forever, um, but, you know, you do have situations like, you know, um, like, I should say our consoles and whatnot, they're gonna run into issues and, and stuff like that, so with emulation, it's a great way to sort of preserve, uh, these games, especially with, that's what I should be saying, the developers, are not really doing a good job at, um, at preserving games. Some companies are better at it than others. You know, Capcom has stuff like the Capcom Arcade Stadium uh, collections. There's two of them, and they have a bunch of arcade games. They've also re-released a lot of their art, uh, a lot of their fighting games through like the Capcom Fighting Collection, or Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. They also have that Capcom Belt Action Collection, or Ca uh, Capcom Beat 'Em Up Bundle that has like a bunch of classic Capcom beat 'em ups. Um, Sega has been, uh, has been pretty decent at it, Konami has been pretty good at it, uh, been pretty good with it uh, as of late, as of the past couple years, uh, with, like, re-releasing some of the Castlevania games, um, uh, Contra as well, a lot of arcade games, uh, and I think they're the ones that did, uh, Rocket Knight Adventures and Felix the Cat. I think they're the ones that were bringing those out. Um, you also have companies like Let Me Run that are also sort of porting modern games to or classic games to modern platforms. One of them being uh, Clock Tower uh, and the Shantae games as well. And um, you know, those are just some examples. I also just remembered uh, with Capcom, there's the Mega Man games and whatnot. But um, you know, with emulation. Uh, you know, even though there's, even though with the Mega Man, with, you know, some of the examples they brought up, that's basically just a way of playing them on a modern platform. You also have people who are just like, you know, uh, just emulate everything on PC, which I totally get that, you know. It, uh, with 
emulation nowadays, emulation has come very far since, you know, the, uh, since Gleam on the Dreamcast, and now you can, a lot of games can be easily run on a, um, on a laptop. You can even have one that, even have a PC or laptop that, I don't know why it defaults to laptop, probably because I got it right here, but, um, you know, a lot of PCs nowadays, you can get, like, a pretty, you don't even need to have, like, a super powerful PC or anything. You can have a PC that dropped in, or that has parts from, like, 2010 running stuff on, like, even PS2 to some extent. Um, and, um, you know, because of that, it's, it, it can be pretty easy to just have a PC just to run emulation, or just emulate games, and uh, you can even have emulation running on, you can even just run emulators on like modded consoles, like a PS3, even a PS4 or a PS5, possibly. Even an Xbox Series X and S, or even an Xbox One, considering that Microsoft has that whole development uh, kit program where you can just pay $20 and turn your console into a development kit, which is honestly dope as hell. Um, and the thing is, you can also turn it off anytime, so you can use it as a uh, development kit or as a, just a regular console, which is actually pretty cool. Um, kind of removes the need to uh, run like homebrew or some shit, or just hack the console itself when you just do the development kit uh, stuff. But you know, emulation is um, is it's great for preservation, and also in the case of like the Switch emulator, it's actually great to run games better than the actual hardware itself. Case in point, um, uh, Tears of the Kingdom and, uh, like, yeah, Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild, you know, those games, <laughs> it sucks that the Switch isn't, it's, the Switch is starting to show its age, and with those games, it's, you know, especially with, like, Tears of the Kingdom, um, it's, I, I would just like to play those games 60 FPS, and actually with Shin Megami Tensei 5, which is now being re-released on PlayStation 5 and everything else, that game is going to be running, for sure will just be running 60 FPS on PS5 and Series X and whatnot, so and that's what I've been waiting for. I've been wanting to play a version of Shin Megami Tensei 5 that runs at a pretty stable frame rate, but um, point being, like, if, if you just run that on an emulator on uh, with Yuzu, then that wouldn't be a problem. Granted, it, let me also say, I'm not advocating for piracy and whatnot, um, but uh, what I am saying is just emulators can just run games better. Um, and, uh, yeah, so... And then, actually going back to the... Um, uh, to preservation. You know, here's another thing. Retro games are becoming more and more expensive. Um, just as time goes on. It's... It's unfortunate, but, you know, that's where retro games are nowadays. Uh, a good example, actually, um, is Chrono Trigger. That's, I'm just now thinking about that because I just also recorded the video uh, uh, for Kyo Toriyama. Check that out if you haven't yet. Even though, I, you know, I tried to uh, talk about, you know, Kyo Toriyama as best as I could. Um, and, you know, he made a big impact on the industry, but... That's a whole different can of worms. Um, so, point being, uh, like Chrono Trigger, that's a really expensive game. You can actually run that through emulator, which is what I did. Um, so, which I'll get into like when I'll use an emulator and uh, shortly here. But because of how expensive retro games can be, uh, emulation can be like the be the cheapest alternative. You know, especially if the game is not available on modern platforms. Um, which is basically how I, uh, when I will start to use emulation. If there's a game I want to play, um, basically what I'll do is I'll just run through my options. Um, so, and typically I also, I try not to spend a whole lot on a video game. If there's a game I want to play, um, I'll see if I can, I'll see if it's within my price range, and honestly, like, I set a $100 price range, or $100 limit on myself, to where I will not spend over $100 on a single game. Depending on what it is, and if it's like a special edition, I might be willing to go over that limit, um, which I have done before. 
for sure I've done that before, like for some collector's editions, uh, specifically collector's editions, but uh, depending on what it is, I might be willing to go over that limit. Um, but uh, basically it'd have to be something I really want. Um, uh, like, there are a few items that I do want that are over... Actually, no, there's only like one thing that I mainly want that is that goes for over 100. Actually goes for way over 100, but that's a whole different... That's, you know, another... It's a different thing entirely. It's that Near Automata Black Box Edition. Um, so, really my best bet is to just import the Japanese version, because it's... You can find it for much cheaper than the English version, but that's, you know, that's besides the point. Um, basically, emulation just allows you to play games for free without having to pay hundreds of dollars and whatnot. And you know what? It's you know, in a lot of cases, it's it can be great for it can sometimes motivate someone to just go and buy the game, uh, for instance, um, which I'll get into later. But yeah, so like I said, I tend to stick to hundred dollars max. Um, if it's over that, then I'll just see if it's available cheaper on, like, if it's available on modern platforms and whatnot, um, and I'll just do it that way. If it's available on modern platforms, I'll just buy it on, I'll just buy it that way, even if it's not the best version. Um, I'll just buy it on a modern platform if it's cheaper than, you know, playing on the original, uh, the original release, even if it's not the best version. Um, because at that point, I just want to play it. So, and if that's not an option, then I'll run it through emulation. And if that's not an option, then, well, I guess I'm fucked. Um, so as a matter of fact, uh, one game that I would like to play, where that is unfortunately the case from my understanding, is Panzer Dragoon Saga. Four disc game as well, so that would be a huge pain in the ass kind of getting that set up. I could be wrong, I haven't tried playing um, multi-disc games on, through emulator. Um, but, point being, uh, Panzer Dragoon Saga is a game that goes for hundreds, not like a thousand plus dollars. And because it's not available on modern platforms, for now, it, basically my only, the best choice I got would be to run it through emulation, or even just buy the Japanese version, run it on a, on a modded Sega Saturn, possibly run like a uh, English translation patch if it exists. That's another thing. With emulation, you can uh, play imports uh, and just uh, play it with English translation patches if need be. So, um, but anyways, um, but unfortunately, I do not have a Saturn, Sega Saturn, which Sega Saturn is an expensive console to collect for, anyways. Um, so, currently, if I want to play Panzer Dragoon Saga, from my understanding, because uh, and I could be wrong on this one. If I am, please correct me. But with Sega Saturn, Saturn emulation is still a bitch uh, to get working. So, um, but an example of a game that I where I just end up buying the cheaper alternative, um, unfortunately, is with Silent Hill HD Collection, um, with Silent Hill Two and Three. So, I'm well aware that this is not the best way to play Silent Hill Two or Three. I'm well aware of that. The reason why is because I, I try to go through, I try to go with official ways first of playing a game. Um, and if those are all off the table, then I'll go with um, playing it on an emulator. Or playing it on a like modded console, which I, like, I have a modded PS3. Um, and I you know, just play some of the HD collection on, uh, just by running it on a modded PS3. But, like I said, I try to go by, I try to go with official ways first. And, uh, this was the cheapest, uh, this was the cheapest option, um, at the time. And it still is, unfortunately, if you want to play in an official capacity. Um, because Silent Hill 2 and 3 are still really expensive on the PS2. They're like a hundred plus dollars, last I checked. I've seen them go for like 150, sometimes 200. And so I was like, I don't want to spend... One to two hundred dollars for both Sound Hill 2, and that's each. So I decided to go with the uh, cheapest official, you know, the cheapest way of playing it officially, and that was Sound Hill HD Collection. Even if it's not the best way to play it, it's the cheapest way to play it. So yeah, this was an instance where it's like I'll just I'll just play it this way. So um, 
But, uh, and then I can also say the same thing with, like, Chrono Trigger. Um, with Chrono Trigger, granted, that's actually on Steam, uh, but that's not, like, the, unless you mod it, that's not the best way to play it, because it has, it suffers from game crashes and whatnot, but with Chrono Trigger, that game, that game, that was actually a game I played through emulator at first, but then eventually I wanted to see about getting a physical copy. Unfortunately, that game is really expensive, even on the DS. Um, so, and the cheapest alternative right now is to play it on a PS1, even through the Final Fantasy Chronicles collection, um, which that's like twenty to thirty dollars last I checked. Could be more by now, but last I checked, it was like twenty, thirty dollars somewhere around that price range. But you can also get it for like I want to say it's ten dollars on the PlayStation Store. That's how I got it. Um, so. And you know, yeah, I prefer physical over digital any day of the week. But if it's the only option I have, then that's then yeah, I I'm trying not to buy. Uh, I'm trying to buy physical exclusively as much as I can. Um, unfortunately, that unless Ellen Wake Two gets a uh, gets a physical release at some point, um, my only way of playing that would probably have to be through. Uh, just buying it digitally, unfortunately. But yeah, so in this case, Simon Hill HD collection. Um, so, however, there were there are a few instances where I actually did. Um, I actually I played it first through emulator, and then I ended up getting a physical copy. One of those. This is actually a game I uh, asked for, for Christmas and got it. Persona Four. I initially played this on an emulator. And I was, I only played it for like an hour and a half, but I was so intrigued, and I loved what I played of this game so much, I just asked for a copy of it for Christmas, and lo and behold, I got a copy of it brand new as well. And, um, you know, this went on to be one of my favorite games on PS2. Uh, probably my favorite PS2 RPG. Or at least one of my absolute favorites. This game just blew my mind. It was just a fantastic game. If you haven't played Persona 4, I'd actually go with Persona 4 Golden. You can get that now on everything. Um, and it's, you know, Persona 4 but better. You know, new content and whatnot. But, uh, this was just a great experience. Um, and I'm so glad that this was, you know, Persona 4 was like the gateway drug for me for the Persona series. And, uh, uh, you know, I was very happy to actually get a physical copy of it for PS2 after trying it through an emulator. I was running the emulator on a PC that shouldn't have been running one in the first place, if I'm being honest, because the game ran like ass on there, so. And then another game that I actually, uh, that I initially played on an emulator, and then I later just bought it, was Fatal Frame. I initially played this on a, on PCSX2 on PC, and, uh, this game actually ran pretty damn well. It ran at a uh, at basically a lock 60 FPS. Um, however, I ended up just later buying it on the PlayStation Store, um, which is still the cheapest official way of playing Fatal Frame 1, 2, and 3, um, because uh, this game is not cheap. All three Fatal Frame games on the PS2 are still pretty expensive. They can be like $100. They're $100 games, basically. And, um, uh, yeah, so I initially bought this on the PlayStation Store, uh, for this and Fatal Frame 2 and 3. And, um, uh, I eventually did pick up a physical copy for the first Fatal Frame. Still need to pick up Fatal Frame 2 and 3. Um, but yeah, and actually the reason why I just ended up buying it on the PlayStation Store, uh, and just waiting to, uh, sit down and actually play Fatal Frame, uh, even after playing it through emulator, the reason why I didn't get far into when playing on an emulator was purely because I ran into an issue, uh, a game-breaking bug that would that basically halted progress. So that's why I eventually just bought it on the PlayStation Store and I'm just buying physical copies. So great game, by the way. If you haven't played it yet, it's, it's, an, excellent, it's an excellent game, um, and I hope that gets re-released at some point because yeah, it's it's awesome. I still need to finish up my Let's Play for it though. So. But yeah, um, and I'm sure I could probably find a few other games, actually Parasite being one of them. That was another game I tried through Emulator, and uh, actually I'm getting a copy of it for Christmas, and it's it's a great game, I highly recommend it. So, um, but yeah, so, yeah, for me, 
emulation is last resort. I go by official means first, even if it's not the best way to play it. Official means first. Um, and even, even if I have to buy digitally, uh, I mean, if I just want to play it, if I have to buy digitally, I will do so. Um, but that's only if it's the only option I got. Uh, otherwise, at that point, I might as well just run it through emulation. Um, so, and believe me, there might be some games where I will probably have to just play it through emulator because it's the only option I have. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm trying to think of, uh, oh yeah, Rule of Rose, Kuan, and uh, Haunting Ground, because those games are, are worth hundreds of dollars on the PS2. That's how much they, uh, that's the price for them, unfortunately. Um, you know, those games go for, go for hundreds of dollars, and at this point, running them through emulation is the only, way, the only choice I got. Um, so, and, um, you know, here are actually some examples of games that are still only on, uh, they're still, they haven't been re-released or anything, so if you don't want to pay, uh, if you don't want to pay a lot of money just to play these games, uh, at this point, your only choice, uh, you might as well just run through emulation. That is... Eternal Darkness, uh, Sandy's Requiem, and F-Zero GX for the GameCube. You know, luckily these w were within my price range, but if you don't want to pay like 70, 80 plus dollars to play these games, I would not blame you for wanting to run these and just play these through emulation because these are great games. I haven't, I haven't played them a ton, but these are great games and these were, you know, GameCube is a console that's actually getting expensive and, um, these were the main games I wanted before it all just went downhill and everything became hundreds of dollars, so... These end up being the two most expensive GameCube games I get. Um, that's fine by me, you know. These were the main ones I really wanted to play, so... But, um... You know... Just... Emulation for me is a last resort. That's all it is. If... Uh, you know... Like with Silent Hill HD Collection, that's... Uh, that's the only choice I got. Uh, that was the most, that was the cheapest option I had, so. Um, but, uh, yeah, and also just, like, emulation can be good if you are, um, if you want to get a game, but you're not sure if you will like it, and th that actually goes for all sorts of media, you know, books, um, movies, etc. Pi with piracy, I'm not completely advocating for piracy, but, you know, basically what I'm saying here is I'm not entirely against it, but at the same time, like, I don't know, it's a whole different different can of worms, but, um, you know, sometimes it can be great if you're not sure if you will enjoy a film, or enjoy a film, or book, or comic, or what have you, um, however, Nowadays, we do have a lot of streaming services and whatnot, and um, I am, like I said, more of an advocate for just owning whatever you buy and whatnot, but, um, you know, streaming services can be good for that reason, for if you are uh, not sure about a book or, uh, or a game or what have you. Actually, the Shonen Jump uh, app on Android is actually very good. You get access to hundreds of manga. That's how I've been reading the Chainsaw Man manga, which is awesome, by the way. Highly recommend it. So... But, um, yeah, so, that's my thoughts on emulation, um, I'm totally for it, um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, if you emulate all your games, I am totally all for that, I wouldn't blame you, honestly, um, if I wanted to, when it comes to retro games, if I were to start getting into retro games now, I would just be an emulation guy as much as possible, you know. I do have a lot, uh, okay, I have a lot more modern games, I do retro games, um, but, uh, like, PS4, I have over 200 games, so, there you go, um, but, you know, at this point, if I were to, um, especially with, like, Super Nintendo and just anything from the PS1, uh, and Sega Saturn and even Dreamcast and before, hell, to some extent, PS2, GameCube, and Xbox. Those consoles and before, at this point, I might as well just, uh, at this point, I would just be, I was just getting into retro games. At this point, I would just 
be an emulation guy as much as possible. So, especially with just the prices of a lot of retro games and whatnot. So, and granted, I'll still buy retro games. Um, so, but like I said, if the only choice, if the only affordable option I have for some games is emulation, I will just go through. I will just go down the emulation route. So, but. For the most part, I try to stick to official means of playing games. So that's where I'm at with emulation. And um, yeah, I apologize if this video is all over the place, but I just I've been wanting to do this video for a while. So, um, but uh, yeah, so there you have it. Uh, definitely check out my video on um, on my thoughts on physical media, and also check out my video on Kira Toriyama. I know it's probably not the best video talking about Kira Toriyama, but you know. I, I tried my best. So, there you have it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what your guys' thoughts on emulation are and what your guys' thoughts on the whole thing with Nintendo and the Yuzu emulator. And, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe for more content. Um, and, uh, yeah, y'all have a great rest of your day.